Good morning, St. Michael. Good morning. Nice to have so many of you here today. It's a beautiful uh, day for us to gather together for worship. Um, it's nice and warm and dry inside. How about that? We had a wonderful work day yesterday at the African American Cemetery. Again, it was a little bit like this morning, moist, but uh, that meant it was cool and the snakes were all in their little beds, leaving us alone. Um, if you see me without my robe on, it looks like I was in a cat fight with a lion. Um, I basically <laughs> took on the task of, of uh, uh, rolling up barbed wire from, uh, from old fences that were on the side of the, <laughs> and every once in a while they'd whip around and grab me. So, um, so I'm trying to, I you know, wiped everything down so I'm disinfected. Anyway, but it was a wonderful time. Um, we had a little bit of a snafu with our bell so we're going to have to do some work on that. But uh, the towers have been uh, um, uh, supported and done everything from the inside that needed to be done. And now we're waiting to uh, figure out how to get the bell up there and get it operating and uh, all of that. So just uh, be patient, but thank you so much for everybody's um, contributions to that. And uh, we've also, we've already gotten a few really wonderful gifts from folks above and beyond giving to, uh, to help with that uh, tower renovation project. Okay, on uh, Wednesday we have Bible study, and uh, for those who would like to skip the Bible study but come for lunch, uh, we always do a, a soup lunch during Lent uh, following the Bible study, so at noon uh, or 11.30 or so, uh, gather in the fellowship hall and we'll have a soup uh, lunch and just uh, kind of uh, a, a Lenten tradition for us, so you know, be a part of that if you would like to. Also... Um, I want to remember Danny Frick at Lexington Medical Center, uh, who is there. And John Martin has been uh, at Providence since yesterday. So we want to remember John Martin. Hopefully Joan and John Martin are watching today. Um, we, I hope you've been studying your bulletin as you've been sitting here this morning waiting. Um, as is our custom, we, we switch around the liturgy when the season changes. And so we are uh, doing some changes to our liturgy uh, starting this Sunday for Lent. Some of those changes will continue on through the Easter season, so uh, just be aware of them. One of them that uh, should be no problem is that we are doing setting four of the ELW, which is this book, but you don't have to have it because everything's in the bulletin. Setting four is one that we've used before, and so you should be familiar with it. Um, I'll, do the, I'll be singing the Kyrie, you'll be singing the responses, and then we'll do the hymn of praise after that. So uh, just take note of that change. We are also going to do a new gospel acclamation, but you've heard it before. So I would like for uh, Cantor Karen to play it for us. It's on page seven in the bulletin if you would like to look at it. And we're going we're gonna to do some fun stuff with that as time goes on. But for now, we're just going to sing through it. So let's try singing through it with Cantor Karen. She'll play through it once. Okay, let's try that all together. You ready? He will come from east and west and from north and south and will lead in the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, oh, blessed are they who eat bread in the kingdom the kingdom of God. I love that. It has sort of a Native American sound to it. Um, I do want to point out that these things are not just random that we select, but you'll notice that we're talking about bread. And then in today's gospel lesson, um, you'll notice that uh, Satan offers Jesus bread after 40 days of not eating. So we're going to be talking about bread in the kingdom as we look at this gospel acclamation. Um, for the prayers of intercession, if you turn to page 9, we're going to do something that we've done before, but it might be a little new to some folks. 
Um, I will start the prayers by speaking, and then I'll do the introduction. The choir will sing this uh, refrain from a beautiful hymn that uh, we used also uh, as a hymn, as a, uh, um, as a uh, choral piece before. Uh, Karen, can we, uh, can we do that? Uh, just have, have them here. Let's hear the choir sing that. Okay, you ready, choir? Is a longing in our hearts, O oh Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. So I'll do the spoken intro. The choir will sing the refrain, and then I'll do two petitions of the prayer, and then the congregation will sing the refrain. Then I'll do three more petitions, and the congregation will sing the refrain, and then I will do two more petitions, and we will finish up the prayer with the congregation singing that. So you, by the end of, uh, maybe by the end of the day, but also certainly by the end of Lent, you'll be humming that tune in the shower, I guarantee you, because it's a wonderful one. Um, we are singing the liturgy for communion, which is from setting four, which we've done in the past, which includes the Lamb of God and the Holy, Holy, Holy. Um, so just be prepared for that as well. So we're going to work it. You know what liturgy means? Work of the people. I, I, I make congregations work when it comes to liturgy. So hopefully we will get into the rhythm of this during Lent and um, it will be a wonderful experience for us all. All right, any uh, announcements from the congregation? We are collecting. We are. We're returning God's love on Thursday for the candidates that are there, the Pope and the Pope. Super. Thank you so much, Rita. All right, let's take a few moments to prepare ourselves for worship. I invite you to stand if you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. 
Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for 
Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman, said, the woman said to the serpent, you may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 32 responsively. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful <clears throat> will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. A reading from Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift and the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. <clears throat> and the free gift is not like the effect of of the one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, 
much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. Just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. As we begin this Lenten journey of 40 days between now and Easter, we are actually walking with Jesus throughout these uh, five or so weeks. Sunday by Sunday, we will hear more and more about his teachings, about his relationship with his followers, about his relationship with his Father, God. We will be hearing about all the ways in which Jesus grew grew as a teacher, grew as a Messiah, and grew as someone who the disciples did not understand. What we have today in this temptation story is really the undoing of the temptation story from Genesis. One of the reasons why we read about the serpent and the apple and Eve and Adam and all of that is because theologically we believe that in that action, Adam and Eve sort of doomed all of humanity to a life of disobedience, to a life of misunderstanding God's intentions, a life of selfishness as opposed to selflessness. And so Jesus, surprisingly, as soon as his baptism happens, He is driven out into the wilderness. You would think that this baptism, which is 
is, uh, sort of pronounces who Jesus is. Remember the voice from heaven that says, this is my son, the beloved. You would think that Jesus would then sort of celebrate the fact that he now truly understands what God has in mind for him. Truly understands why he was born and, and why he was in that place at that time to receive the baptism of repentance from John the Baptist. And yet, instead of sort of celebrating or opening up his ministry, he is driven into the wilderness. Now, if you've ever been to Israel-Palestine, if you've ever been in that part of the world, the Judean desert is about as inhospitable a place as I've ever seen in my life. Literally, nothing grows there. There is no water, no even vision of water. It is literally one pile of rocks after another, as far as the eye can see. It is a dangerous place. It is a place where people and animals and nature fight for existence. And so you can imagine as we hear that Jesus was out there for 40 days and 40 nights. You can think that maybe the physical was the challenge. Surviving the physical was the challenge. But in actuality, the survival that Jesus is seeking there is a spiritual survival. You know, we often think of Jesus as being sinless. Jesus as uh, not really needing John the Baptist's uh, baptism of repentance. You know, we have this sort of shiny-eyed idea of Jesus walking around with a halo and not doing anything wrong, not saying anything bad. We do have little hints in the gospel about times when he sort of loses his temper or when he kind of loses his way or his focus. But in this story of the temptation, we often like to think of Jesus as sort of just sort of getting through it, just sort of play acting. You know, this 40 days and this 40 nights is just sort of something that he had to get through. There are also those who think that uh, the 40 days and 40 nights are, are symbolic, that, you know, there's the 40 days of rain in Noah, 40 is a special number in Scripture, and they say certainly somebody couldn't survive 40 days and 40 nights without food and water. But it's not about the physical. It's not about, we, about what we understand about this temptation, about this, this time in the wilderness. This is about power. This is about God's power versus the power of Satan. This is about the power of faith and love and grace versus the power of selfishness and greed, money, and authority. And so when you actually translate what Jesus is going through into that power struggle, then you realize that what Satan is trying to do is to subvert what God is trying to do. Satan is determined to have Jesus come to his side. Satan is trying to sort of divert this agenda that God has through sending his son into the world. The bread, the temple, the nations. All of those things God already has. And Jesus as part of God already possesses but they possess them in a way that we don't quite understand. Because we, in some ways, become, through our sinfulness, cheerleaders for Satan, cheerleaders for that idea of a different kind of power. We are often distracted by our, our thoughts of, of money and power and authority. You know, we see in our world the conflict over territory and the conflict over resources, that's all part of this sinfulness that starts in the garden. 
and which continues and continues and continues. And Jesus knows and comes to know through this temptation experience that God is doing something new and different. That God is not about sort of establishing earthly kingdoms or establishing authority over other people or about getting rich. God is about the harmony of all of us together. The harmony of us loving each other and living in the grace of God. You know, the book of Romans written by Paul is a theological book. It does tell some stories, but for the most part, what we know about the early church is in Acts. You know, it's more of a historical book. Romans is a theological treatise on, on what in the world was God doing when God sent Jesus. And so as we read these words from Romans today, as we read about grace and being justified and being raised up, those are not words of, of accomplishment, so to speak, because even though Jesus has accomplished Jesus' part, we still live in a sinful world and we still are, are falling short of our part. We can make an effort. We can seek to be more loving and generous and graceful. But ultimately, we are sinners. But Romans tells us that even though we are sinners, God still loves us, and God still cherishes us. And that motivates us, motivates us to look more carefully at what the kingdom of God is all about. So this temptation of Jesus culminates in Jesus passing the test, Jesus sort of understanding what God is asking him to do. And Jesus will walk out of that wilderness, out of that desert time. And Jesus will go to work. Not to take over, not to become sort of earthly power and authority, not to make others and himself rich. But he will come out of that wilderness to teach us to teach us that God loves us enough to sacrifice himself for us and that our response is our gift to God. May you have a blessed Lent, 40 days of discovery, 40 days of enrichment, and 40 days of living and walking with Jesus.
Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living, living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. There is a longing in our hearts, O oh Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, you are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love. We pray especially today for John Martin, John Martin. Doc, Doc, Joyce, Joyce. Henry, Henry, Don, Don. Gwen, Gwen, Joe, Joe. Jackie, Jackie, Mickey, Mickey. Terry, Terry, Gail, Gail. Susan, Susan, Tommy, Tommy. Richard, 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 Ed, Ed. and Danny. Danny. We pray for all of those who are in service to our country. We pray for Tyler, Tyler. Samantha, Samantha. Zachary, Zachary, Grant, Grant Victor, Victor, Phil, Phil Colin, Colin, Griffin, Griffin Brian, 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 Hunter, Hunter and Colt. Colt. Merciful God, Receive you offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters, ushers, coffee hour hosts, and nursery attendants. Merciful God, there is a longing in our hearts, O oh Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we could only find in you, our God. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a longing in our hearts for for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. Congregation may be seated.
Please stand. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God, creator of our wilderness world, O God, savior of the lost, O God, comforter of the sick and suffering, we give you thanks for your everlasting might. We glorify you for your covenant of mercy. For 40 days you cleansed the earth with the waters of the flood. For 40 days you illumined Moses with the words of your law. For 40 years you fed your people with manna from heaven. You became truly human in Jesus our brother. For 40 days, with fasting and prayer, he renounced the power of the devil. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We extol his life. Amen. Amen. We lament his death. Amen. Amen. We celebrate his resurrection. Amen. Amen. Transform us, O God, with your lively spirit. Make this food into manna for our journey, the body and blood of your Son. Grant us with the Ninevites 40 days of repentance. Teach us your words of wisdom and justice. Renew the whole earth with baptismal grace. And at the last, lead all your pilgrim people through our deserts to your Easter garden. To you, O God, creator, savior, comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our worship and praise, adoration and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
to them. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Embodied God at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love.